Good evening, everyone. Happy December. Uh, since it's uh, since it's the first of the month, I decided to go out and see a new movie, and well, that movie is Silent Night. Uh, I'll admit when I first saw the trailer in this, like uh, I was immediately blown away, and I really wanted to see this movie. Um, I haven't seen a lot of films that Joel Kinnaman is in, uh, aside from the Suicide Squad movies, so. I decided to check this uh, one out mostly because like he's in it and it also felt like it was gonna be like an action thriller in the same vein as like something like John Wick or The Punisher and uh well I was right on that um but again between this and the Suicide Squad films both of them uh I honestly think that this is um that this is uh Kinnaman's better performance out of uh those films and I don't know if that's because of the character that he played in the Suicide Squad movies being um, uh, being Rick Flagg, who is basically like a normal human uh, who has to share the screen time with uh, all of these super powered characters, especially in the in the James Gunn version. Um, or or the fact that, like, just to me rick flag wasn't all that interesting like in the first movie in the first movie he was sort uh, he had a uh he had uh he had a connection to the plot since he was like dating the enchantress in that film but then the james gunn movie uh they they basically just made him there uh the only thing that i really remember him for is that um is that like he uh, he wanted to set up a rescue for Harley Quinn uh because like because uh those two were actually friends um and that was all I remembered uh, from him that and the fact that peacemaker killed him so this uh, uh this film uh I was already kind of expecting um I was expecting his character not to talk obviously because like even in the trailer like he gets shot in the throat, so it takes away his voice. Uh, what I wasn't expecting, though, was that um, there is very minimal dialogue in this film. Like, I think uh, basically, like, each main character in this film, that being um, that being uh, Joel Kinman's character named Ryan Goldock, um, I think that's his last name. But each main character, like, of Brian, his wife, the lead detective guy, and one of the, one of the main antagonists, uh, they basically each have one line of dialogue each, and even when it is spoken, like, it's, like, highly muffled. Um, and then aside from that, the only other uh, the only other, like, speaking lines are, like, over a police radio or, like, a song that's being played, such as, uh, the original Silent Night that's played at the very beginning. Um, it's almost, uh, it's almost like a, um, it's almost like a silent film of the modern age, if that makes sense, where, like, there's almost no speaking, even though you can still hear the sounds and still hear music and still hear like dialogue even though it's mostly in voiceovers or like I said where um where each main character has like a single line of dialogue and even then like it's very muffled like uh one of the guys uh, there's this one guy that uh Joel Kinnaman tortures and um and the guy yeah like screams fuck you at him but uh but the dude's gagged so like you can barely hear it or when um or uh, or in a flashback when Joel Kinnaman is talking to his son um uh, about like uh riding a bike uh it's like heavily modified where it almost sounds like a whisper and the same thing goes for it uh, goes for his wife in the film um as well as uh, the detective but that doesn't really take away from uh, the film if anything like it kind of it kind of adds to their acting where like they're they kind of have to convey their emotions through all their facial expressions 
and I and at this point like I'm convinced that uh that if you really want to have some a uh, person's acting shine uh you take away something that's kind of essential to uh, their acting if that makes sense like um like for here like you take away their voices so they have to convey like every emotion uh through like uh their facial expressions and like subtle body language um or like in the movie dread where um where Carl Urban's uh, face was, like, half-masked so that, like, he couldn't see his eyes or anything. So he had to, uh, he had to, like, really emote with just his, like, with just his jaw and chin, which worked really well because uh, Carl Urban killed it in the role. Uh, or, uh, or, like, any other, you know, or, like, any movie where uh, someone's mouth is covered so, like, all you can see is uh, their eyes and, like, you can like tell if they're angry, right? So just uh just subtle uh, things like that where like you take away an essential part of somebody's acting and it forces them to like crank like the other side of uh themselves uh pretty much up to 11. And I thought that worked really well in this film. Uh the story itself is pretty good like i'm i'm not going to i'm not going to lie it's it's not exactly original i mean uh, i already said that it's basically like the punisher or john wick and it is like the punisher his family dies so he goes on a revenge spree john wick his dog gets killed and his car gets stolen he goes on a revenge spree here joel kinnaman's uh, character he loses his son on i believe uh christmas day actually um and so he t he takes like an entire year to just build him out himself up into being like a killing machine um and well I mean, like i said it's like a punisher and john wick um the violence and gore is fantastic uh though i don't I'm not sure if they used any CGI in this, um, well, okay, they did use a little bit of CGI, I'll get back to that in a second, but for the most part, uh, the, uh, the blood and the violence just looks amazing, um, John Woo, uh, did a great job directing this film, like, even aside from the, uh, from the blood and gore, like, just the camera movements, the angles, uh, the close-ups, the different, uh, the different ways that the shot is framed are, uh, are stunning. Uh, the lighting is pretty good. Um, the music itself is great. Um, uh, I mean, like, obviously there's the Silent Night song that plays at the beginning. And then there's this other song that, um, that I don't know if it was from like Ramstein or Ramstein or if it was uh, from the same uh band that sang um the song Dirty Picture if anyone remembers that one uh but either way the music uh, was great here um <sighs> what else can I say about this film uh oh I did uh, I did really like that um that uh, that Joel Kinman's uh, character is, like, continuously haunted by the death of his son. And, like, what I mean by that is, uh, throughout, throughout all these revenge films, like, um, like The Punisher or John Wick or, or, or this one other kind of movie that's a little bit similar to this, uh, that I can't remember what it's called, but it starred Ant uh, Antonio Banderas and Carl Urban. Uh, where basically Antonio Banderas uh, decided to uh, take an oath to never speak again until he finds uh, his family's killers. Um, where like in all those movies, and even in like uh, the even in that one TV show, The Terminal List, where it was like eight episodes long, uh, I feel like uh, they only really touch upon like the. Uh, like the mental toll that uh, that all those characters go through, 
like um like they don't really uh, show and they don't really have a whole lot of like breathing moments of like Frank Castle just thinking about uh, his uh, wife and kids or like John Wick thinking about his wife uh, Helen or like the dog that he just lost uh, there, uh, those scenes are like few and far between like throughout all of those uh, movies and TV shows but here like um uh, like they're constantly flashing back to uh Brian and his son and like that's and it really drives home that like that's the driving force that um that uh, that gives uh, Joel Kinman's character a reason why he's doing what he's doing like this I didn't I didn't expect this movie to go this hard with that whole um with uh with showing like just <laughs> just how badly uh with how badly yeah, Brian was taking it as a father in the movie and like it uh, it really destroyed uh, it really destroyed uh, his uh, life throughout the film like cuz throughout the time where he's preparing to take on like the entire drug cartel that killed his son um it also shows like the consequences of him going down that path and again like not a lot of the films that i've mentioned except for except for maybe yeah, john wick uh has really like dived uh has really dived deep into the uh into that whole into that whole other side of uh, like a revenge story and i thought that was uh, really cool that they actually did that in this film um i can't really think of <laughs> anything else that i really liked about this uh, movie because like it, it was a knockout so the the one thing that i didn't really uh, care for was um there are a couple scenes that are cgi um and uh well actually there's quite a few especially with like flashbacks of brian and his son uh, but there is this one moment at the very beginning of the film where this bird just flies onto a window, and I'm pretty sure it was CGI, and to me it just stuck out like a sore thumb, uh, very similar to, like, the owl from the, from Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, if anyone knows what I'm talking about there, and then, like, towards the end, there are these sort of, like, balloons that, um that kind uh that um that show like flashbacks of Brian's son in them and to me I I also thought that the CGI kind of stuck out like a sore thumb uh, there and like I haven't seen Thor Love and uh, Thunder but I know that people are gonna know what I'm talking about here it kind of looked like that um that one bubble in the movie that showed Heimdall's son and I don't know like just for for a movie that had like a lot of really good flashback scenes where like they where they pan to the ground and then they pan back up and it's a flashback uh, sequence and like it's so seamless it looks uh, like a single take except if you look really uh, close and you see like the and you see like the color palette change like i just uh feel uh like um they spent um uh, they spent all that time to make those flashbacks really good, but then when they got to the end, it feels uh, like um it feels like uh, they literally just pasted uh, an image uh, some images over um over uh, the movie, but that's that's just uh, my perspective of it, and that uh, that was just my opinion uh, of this film because. Other than those two uh, small, like, nitpick scenes, like, this film was amazing. Like, I don't see it, uh, I don't really see it becoming a classic, but uh, I can see it uh, gaining, like, a cult following, mostly because of how, uh, mostly because of how kind of unique and, in a way, deep this uh, was. But I think it was uh, a great movie to start off uh, this month, even though it's not completely a Christmas movie. Like, I mean... Uh, I'm someone who says that Die Hard is the greatest Christmas movie of all time, 
and even I don't think that this movie was really a Christmas film, aside from it taking place on Christmas Eve. But either way, this is still a great movie to start the month out, and uh, hopefully yeah, next week I'll find time to see Napoleon, so I'll be reviewing uh, that one in time. But those were all my thoughts for Silent Night. It was a great movie. Uh, if anything, like, I'd probably watch this one back-to-back -back with uh, Violent Night, which came out last year. Uh, but both great films, and definitely check uh, this one out. And I'll be looking more into Joel Kinnaman's films as well as John Woo's. But that's really it for this review, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.